Hello, welcome, brethren. This is Manny Fernandez with the uh, Biblical Science. Uh, and today, uh, uh, the topic I want to talk about is uh, brought, brought come to my attention of uh, this uh, no repentance gospel. Believe it or not, that is being preached out there. Uh, I don't like to. Well, I I ask book access you you rather obey God or man. So it doesn't matter what I like or don't like. I, I serve him and not men, so I want to point out some false repentance preachers. One of them is, is, is who I used to call, I'm severely doubting it, I'm going to call the Lord to work on my heart to let him know he's really saved, but I thought he was one of my brethren. He's a Christian for, been a Christian for, for over 40 years, and he uh, travels around the world preaching uh, creationism. But uh, I did warn you guys that don't get caught up with all these people doing these works. Look at all these great works, 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 works. You know, the Bible did say faith without works is dead, but works is evidence of salvation. It should not be its source of salvation. There's a big difference. Okay? Works is a evidence of salvation. I'm not doubting that. It should not be the source. Okay? The source of your salvation should be two things, two gifts. Uh, first, you have to want to believe, and then God gives you the faith, which is a gift of the Spirit, not of you, to believe. And in that, He gives you godly sorrow, not worldly sorrow, godly sorrow. Repentance is a gift from God, at least this type of repentance. I don't know which repentance they're talking about. Some say they, you don't need repentance. So you need those two things. Uh, if you put salvation in an equation of what what you need is faith in Christ, what He did, who He is, what He did, plus godly repentance equals your salvation. That's it. If I have to put that in a, because remember, I like to break things down scientifically. But I have two 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 people that I want to go in detail. That one I thought uh, was saving. Uh, I, but I keep telling you guys, do not underestimate the devil. Believe it or not, there are people that underestimate the devil. He goes after saved people. He might as well be saved. I'll tell you who he is in a moment, but I just want to set it up. That you, you, these people that still underestimate the devil, oh, I'm saved, and the devil's going to leave me alone. No. Okay? Sin unto death is proof that the devil doesn't leave you alone. Sin unto death is only with believers. You can do all these good works, be yield to Holy Ghost, Devil will find something. Everybody has a weak spot, including me. Mostly in men is pride. I think that that's the case with this. Uh, these two people I'm talking about. One definitely pride by the way he preaches. Don't worry, I'll name like I do. I name names. I'm not afraid of no man. I fear no man. I fear it's a man bringing a snare. But uh, you're not supposed to. Um, uh, everybody has a weakness, and as soon as that devil finds that chink in your spiritual armor, I told you, you put on the whole armor of God, your breastplate of what righteousness, your shield of faith, sword of the spirit, the helm of salvation. All you need is one little chink. Doesn't matter where it is. It, those, those spiritual armor, they're only as strong as, as as much as you yield. If you're not yielding that, that your degree of yielding to the Holy Spirit and Dying to yourself daily and renewing your mind is it, it all depends on how strong your armor is. Okay, remember the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. As soon as he finds that little chink in your armor, he got you. And I think he got these two guys because one, I definitely do not believe he's saved. The other guy, I'll say he believes he's saved, but I, I went, it went, it went, it decreased from I strongly believe he was saved to just belief. So that's not good. So yeah, I'm gonna go into detail. These two guys, break it down. Mem remember, I, I name names. Not only I name names, I name the names of the people they associate with, because that's key. Always ask yourself. Remember, I told you by the what, what I call fruits. It's, it's not just uh, the the works. It's the thoughts which you don't know. Only God knows the hearts of men, because that's why I don't want to hear people say, "I know He's saved." Don't use that word. No, you're not God. Only God knows the hearts of men. You can only say, believe. Okay, I strongly believe you saved. I think you believe you saved. Uh, is there some people that are no-brainer that you know they're not saved? Absolutely. And I already know one of them. It's the Black Pope, Jesuit Order. 
he's definitely not safe. But uh, can, can he change that? Yes, because uh, God can save, can send His grace to anyone. But as of now, when I say I definitely believe someone's not saved, I'm saying now. But things can change in a twinkle of an eye, just like it's going to change when we're raptured out of here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to. I want to first, uh, uh, yeah, with the, this false repentance gospel, I, I know I said earlier in my ministry, if uh, you take away from the gospel or you add it to it, it's not the gospel. It's it's watered down and diluted. You can call the gospel what you want, but if you, if you two things it has to have, it has, well, actually three things. Christ, faith, and repentance, but the faith is Christ, so I'll just say two things, faith and repentance, faith and repentance, they're both from God, not in your, John 2, 9, salvation is of the Lord, 100%, doesn't say 100%, I'm saying 100%, of the Lord, faith and repentance are gifts from the Lord, these guys are just saying faith, now, I, th I think, I think, this is why I say, do not fall in this one verse theology, I, t I warned you about that earlier, uh, I told you get a reward just for abiding God's word and studying it and meditating in it. I said be a Berean. A Berean, according to Chuck Nissa, is someone that does not hate, does not just look for one scripture. Okay, I'm satisfied. They keep shifting because they they know it's it, the sinful when you when you when you yield to the Holy Ghost, the sinful flesh is going to do everything to block you from yielding and not interpret scripture. The only way you can shut up the the sinful nature, put it to rest, is with that. No doubt in your mind is keep bringing scripture over and over again. That's why the Blessed Hope, the video I made, I didn't just put three, four scripture sins, uh, references like these post strippers do. I did about 10 or 11. Okay. I just found out another one from a, a fellow ministry uh, member, I forgot his name, I just watched on YouTube right now. He just made another good point. For all you mid trippers and post trippers uh, of the. It, by the way, he's right. He's not the seven-year tribulation. I just say that because that's what. So, because I, I remind you, the devil's gonna make you use his language, even though that's not what you meant to say. It's, there's no such thing as seven-year tribulation in the Bible. That's its description. It's called the seventieth week of Daniel. That's what it's called. So I'm pre seventy week of Daniel. Blessed hope. I'm not, I don't call it rapture. Blessed hope. That's biblical. That's what the Bible calls it. Tribulation is what it's describing it. Not regular tribulation like every Christian is experiencing now. I'm talking about the tribulation. So, yeah, uh, I think these guys, uh, first of all, they're post trippers and but fruits. Both of them are post trippers. One was a pre tripper in 40 years. For 40 years, and he changed his mind to post tripper. But the Bible says, hold fast in the faith. That's one of the awards. I'm just saying. 40 years, you're a pre tripper really? And now you're post? 40 years? Holy Ghost did not convict you? I know it's not God's fault. I always say, uh, if this fault in your sound doctrine, don't blame God because he's not the author of confusion. 40 years. That's words out of his mouth. I've been preaching 40 years for a pre tripper I'm a pre tripper Now I'm a post tripper These guys are both post tribbers. Uh, anyways, uh, that one more point about the Blessed Hope. Uh, this uh, fellow ministry member, I don't know his name, but God knows his name. Because like I said, I name names on both sides. I don't take credit. If I figure, I found something from someone else, I'm going to, if I don't know his name, I'm going to give him a shout out. God knows. He made another good point, pro, very important point about the more scriptural proof of the Blessed Hope. I'm not going to read the Bible because I'm talking to believers. Because if you're a believer, what do you care about the Blessed Hope? So this is to believers. Uh, and, and believers know this is in the Bible. Uh, remember, God does not put on you temptation more than you can handle. The Bible says, I will I'll deliver you to the hour of this temptation. I said that in my previous video, the Blessed Hope. I believe that hour of the temptation, that hour of the temptation is when the dollar, the dollar crashes. Remember, the dollar is a reserve currency. It crashes, all the, sim all the other currencies crash by design. You got, if you want to buy and sell, provide for your family, you got to take the mark of the beast. That, I believe that is the hour of temptation. So for you mid, mid and post tribbers, you're saying God's going to go ahead, let his Christ members be submitted on taking the mark of the beast. 
to provide for his family. And one more thing, uh, Timothy, I think it's in Timothy, he who does not provide for his own is worse than an infidel. It can't get any harsher than that. What is it? What is an infidel? An unbeliever. So you don't provide for your own family. That means uh, your, your wife and your kids. You're worse than unbeliever. So the, the Christian in the body of Christ in the pre -trib in the tribulation area has a real, uh, he's in a dilly of a pickle. I can't take the mark of the beast, but the Bible says if I don't provide for my family, I'm worse than an infidel. infidel. I deny the faith. More, that's another another scripture to add into my collection of the doctrine of imminence of why the body of Christ cannot be here. He also said, the, there's no way the Antichrist can take rule with, with the Spirit of God still on earth, with the Holy Spirit on God still on earth. He's talking about the body of Christ. If you're a body of Christ, you have the Holy Ghost in you, the vicar of Christ in you. Okay? Remember, I told you, uh, light and dark cannot exist in the same place. If you're saying you're admit a post trip, but you're saying it can, you're calling God a liar. So I say, uh, Christians cannot get demon possessed. I cannot have darkness in me. I'm not talking about sinful nature of darkness. That's a, you know, the type of darkness. To me, that's not even darkness. That's that's your nature. That's natural. I'm talking about demons. You're sinf you can't have a demon inside you and the Holy Ghost inside you. Light and dark cannot exist in the same spot. That's scientific. Is this room light or dark? Oh, it's, it's in the middle. No, it's either light or dark, one or, one or the other. I turn off the light, now it's dark. Okay, it's light or dark. So, yeah, you made a post stripper's you need to repent. I'm not saying you're, you're saved. But one of these guys is a post stripper. And I, as of now, I can say, I want to tell you what he said out of his mouth. You can look it up. I definitely believe he's not saved. The other guy, I'm not sure for. I'm going to pray for both of them tonight. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... it's this mid, uh, uh, mid pre trib, mid tribbers, post tribbers. I mean, this is not really debatable. This is this is getting as stupid and ridiculous as debating evolution. Uh, it's it's pre seventieth week of Daniel, pre tribulation rapture. I'm going to use, have to use that terminology because that's the Jesuit terminology. But for me to speak bi biblically, it's it's seventieth week of Daniel. So I'm going to say seventieth week of Daniel. So. I just, on my Blessed Hope video, I just named about 10 verses in that video and I just added in one more. Okay? Well, if you're a body of Christ and you're supposed to take the mark of the beast, you're not, right? But you have to take care of your family, though. There's no money, remember? The only money currency is the mark of the beast. You, you're worse than an infidel. Have you denied the faith? That's what it says in the Bible. He who does not provide his, for his own is worse than an infidel. That's. That's what he says. But I think the best scripture that just destroys mid post tribber discuss discussion is Titus. Looking. Looking. It doesn't say look. Looking as in right now. Unless you want to be allegorical and re reconstruct and redefine that word. Uh, last time I checked, looking means imminent, which means at any moment, right now. Looking, present tense. Looking for the glorious appearing, that's another name for the blessed hope. I call it two things, blessed hope and the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Looking as looking for the great appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that right there. Remember, the Bible says, obey, don't obey me, but you will obey his word. Okay? I told God time and time again, if it's post tribber fine. But to this day, I haven't found scriptural, now, nobody coming with me with, with scriptural evidence for mid or post trib rapture I have, I'm finding more and more for pre tribulation which pre tribulation I mean 70 week of Daniel it's funny all the post trib raptures got a lot of issues with them and everybody I know that's pre trib they seem perfectly sound in doctrine are they perfect? no are they sound in the doctrine that counts? yes they're not preaching no repentance gospel okay by fruits ye shall know them. It's funny. All these pre-tribbers, which I'm one of them, the pre-tribbers, they get they get salvation, faith, and repentance. Period. Those gifts from God. If we that's post tribs there's a lot of things wrong with them. Just give me a moment here. <clears throat> Like I said, the company, let's start with the company they keep. 
let's name uh, let's start naming names. The guys I'm talking about is Ken Hoven. Ken Hoven. Now, I thought I called them brethren. I still do. Um, because I just told you, do not underestimate the devil. He doesn't care if you're saved. If you're saved, he comes after you even more. Sin unto, sin unto death is for believers, not non-believers. Those are the people that fall back to their old, walk back in the darkness. I won't use back to them because people just get negative content. Fine, I won't use that. Walk, They walk in darkness, back into iniquity. And then God has to give them up to the devil to destroy their body so they can go to heaven. For the for the simple fact that sin unto death is for believers, I can I can see him falling away, but still be saved. The other guy, no. The other guy is Pastor Anderson. The way uh, you should you should hear the things that come out of this guy's mouth. YouTube, uh, uh, Pastor Anderson. I think it's James James Anderson exposed Ken Hovind exposed, and you see from out of their words, they, another fruit is that how you talk, your own words. I don't like, I'm all for that term, out of the horse's mouth. This is out of the horse's mouth. I don't like to hear it say. I'm all about the truth. The truth is Jesus Christ. It's a man. Everything, the whole truth. That's the key word, whole. I'm all about the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Okay? So, yeah, it's, it's about Pastor Anderson. And I actually like, uh, uh, I actually love them because you're supposed to love your enemies. Let's start with Pastor Anderson. He's a post tripper, like I said. Uh, in his own ministry, he says, "You can be baptized, you can go to church, you can't turn from sin, but uh, those are not required to go to heaven." His words: "All you need is believe on Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved," which is in the Bible. I, I think there's that one verse theology. The Bible doesn't say that. It's it's to pause. It says, "What the, what I need to be." What I need to do to be saved? Believe on Jesus Christ and be saved. But uh, th that belief has a lot of connotation in it. There's some some uh, gifts from God for you to believe. If you if you can't believe without repentance, that's why that's why I say do not hang your, your doctrine on one verse. I'm not a one verse theologist. Multiple verses. Multiple verses. So yeah, Pastor Anderson says, uh, this is what he says out of his own mouth, don't believe me, go ahead and uh, Google uh, Pastor Anderson exposed. Uh, the guy just plays a video of his preacher and let him talk. He hates Obama, prays for him to die, hates homosexuals, they should be put to death. All I'm hearing is hate speech. He says, go ahead, call me hate speech. This is to a news reporter. Kill kill these kill these uh homosexuals. I don't want to misquote him on it. Say exactly what he says. Kill these homosexuals. They all shall die. Which which Hitler did? Did you guys know Hitler sent homosexuals to the Auschwitz concentration camps? Hitler killed a lot more than Jews. Okay, the devil wants you to know he just killed Jews so he, he can build his Israel, state of Israel so his Pope Rome can rule there in, in the tribulation period. The first sent to the Auschwitz camps were Protestant Czechs. Not Jews. He killed Roman Catholic priests that did not did not believe what he was doing. Heinrich Himmler beheaded beheaded his officers that went and followed Hitler. I didn't hear that. It's Holocaust is all about the Jews, right? He just killed a bunch of Jews. Yes, yes. He killed a lot more people. He sent homeless people, uh, not homeless, homosexuals there, gypsies. They got executed. So there you go. Pastor Anderson aligned with Hitler. <laughs> Death to the homosexual. You're supposed to hate the sin, not the sinner. Uh, love those, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute. Did did Christ hate the Pharisees' teachings? Absolutely, he didn't hate the Pharisees. Hate their teachings, calls them hypocrites. So yeah, that's what our pastor Anderson believes. Uh, he's like I said, he's a he's a post tripper guilty by association. Guess who he's, show he was on? You guessed it, Alex Jones. Both of them were. Alex Jones, he's a Jesuit coadjutor. Good friends with Alex Jones. Pastor Anderson is on the show. The, he bangs on, this is how he preaches, he bangs on his Bible. I, I know I'm, I, I'm animated here in my, uh, I can't help it, I gotta move my hand. I know you guys probably say, oh, you're demon possessed. Okay, if I am demon possessed, this guy's really demon possessed. You see how he preaches, but it's not in Holy Ghost because, don't get me wrong, there's some people that can't control it. 
Pat, there's some people that preach like this, you know, you gotta believe in Jesus. Nothing wrong with that. But then this pastor law said, Yeah, you gotta be Pentecostal. Blah, blah. There's nothing wrong with that. But I get a negative vibe from this type of guy's preaching, you know, much demonic. This is how he preaches. He bangs on his Bible, like, Bomba needs to die. He uses inflammatory okay, homosexual is one thing, but he uses inflammatory words. Faggot. You know, I don't use those words. I use sodomite. Faggot, queer, homo. I don't want those leading my church. This is what he says. Banging on his Bible. That's great. Perfect. Banging on his Bible. It, he's, it looks like he's saying in anger. Be ye angry, but sin not. Yes, righteous indignation. This is this is not righteous indignation. This is demonic anger. So, as of this, as of now, stay away from Pastor Anderson. He's not saved. And he's a post trooper. Not saved. As of now. Okay? I told you, do not underestimate the devil. Okay, and next is Ken Oven. Like I said, I, I still do believe you say it. Just it went from strongly believe to believe. Now that's the problem right there. I'm lukewarm about Ken Oven. Now if I was Jesus Christ, and I was lukewarm about Ken Oven, what did Jesus Christ say? The lukewarm I shall spit out of my mouth. No warm, no warm, uh, no uh, no warm. You either hot or cold. Okay, and if you're warm, it's the same thing as being as being uh, uh, hot. So, Luke, you can't be lukewarm. You either one way or the other. Two feet in, not one foot in, one foot out. Right now, based on Ken Hovind's doctrine, he's one foot in, one foot out. But his why, his why, I'm not really surprised because I saw it from the beginning. He got out of prison. Things wrong with him. This is me not yielding to the Holy Ghost. Here's my point right here. No, Ken Hovind. No, he can't. No, not him. Anyone can fall. No, not him. I watched this guy for years. Creationism. He went around all around the world. I still I got a lot of videos on Ken Hovind. Ten we're talking ten to fifteen hours. You saw I watched Ken Hovind for the whole for the whole uh, uh Saturday from sun up to sundown. Brilliant speaker, intelligent, knows the Lord. I think he's so say, but that's proof that uh don't want to make the devil. He's a roaring lion seeking to devour who he can. Okay? I think he got this pride on Ken Owen and expound that. So, um, yeah, I saw early warning signs. Remember I told you Holy Ghost gives you red flags, which I ignored. What am I talking about? Well, he's uh, against drinking alcohol. That's the first heresy. Does that mean you're not saved? Absolutely not. But that is a warning sign. The, the Bible says, drink wine for the stomach infirmities, for your infirmities. Scientific fact, red wine is good for your stomach and it's good for your heart. Not grape juice, wine. Bacteria, the alcohol kills the bacteria in your heart. It says, it says you can, uh, do, uh, Deuteronomy, buy money for whatever your soul lusted, strong drink. It says you can go ahead and do that. Strong drink, liquor, that's okay, provide it, you, you do not let it control. You. Bible says, do not let no substance or person be a master of you. The only thing that's a master of you should be the Lord Jesus Christ and the Godhead. That's it. And the Holy Ghost, God the Father. Nothing else should be a master of you. He's a he was, he's against that drinking alcohol. He never he never uh, drank alcohol. He said he took Nyquil, but sorry, can't open. That's alcohol. See what I'm saying? It's either all or nothing. It's no in between. Well, that's for medicine purpose. I don't care. Al alcohol is alcohol. It's in it's in there. No. Jesus Christ did not turn wine into grape juice in a Jewish wedding. Okay? If you know anything about ancient Jewish weddings, the wine is the most important part of the meal. <laughs> and, and the guy in the, in the parable when Jesus Christ turned the, the wine into grape juice, the guy said, this is the best wine, better than I had before. That's No, he's not saying this is better grape juice I had before. This is better fermented wine I had before. And Eric Phelps, he's a pre tripper He's all for drinking wine. He said he drinks wine, strong drink. He said when he gets tipsy, when you get tipsy, nice for you slang people, that's your body's warning sign to stop. Some people can drink five glasses of wine and be okay. Some people take one wine and that's it. Okay? Now, I haven't been drunk since, since uh, last year. Been tipsy. Never been drunk. So he's against that. I, I ignore that red flag. Yeah, it's okay. So... Interesting thing, he does YouTube videos, just like you seen that I'm doing now. Saw an interesting thing in his bookshelf. You know, I saw the word Jesus and the fish. Saw that. I, 
Funny thing, although I didn't see it in the next video you did. Maybe, maybe say I don't want people to see this. It, now, I don't want to read into that. Maybe someone came and put that there. Like I said, the devil, anything to bring us down, he'll do it. Maybe someone came over and put that there, but that is not Jesus Christ. That's the Roman Jesus Christ Horus. Jesus Christ, that thing with the fish, fish, and the Jesus Jesus' name inside the fish. That is that is Pisces, astrology, which is demonism. And it, that is uh, Dagon, the fish god, the, the Babylonian fish god. That's why the the Pope's mitre, the hat, it's, it's parallel. Put it sideways. Looks like a fish. Yes, that's exactly what it is. He had that on his bookshelf. He was on an interview. He said, uh, Christian rock, if it's for the Lord, go ahead. So he believes in Christian rock. That's his words, what he said. Look it up. Ken Hoven exposed. And... Repentance comes after you saved. Uh, you get saved, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then after that comes repentance. Then you get saved. That's his words. Uh, Pastor Anderson, I don't need to talk about that because he's not saved, so I'm not talking about I'm talking about who I think believes still is the brethren. Now, nah. just like you can doubt your salvation, don't think you can't doubt. But if, if you can doubt your salvation, you can doubt anyone else's. I, might, I want to use that word doubt. Skeptical, but... I'm gonna pray on it and and uh, and Ken Oven, hope you're safe. Okay, I hope hope you're safe. Uh, and if you are safe, I hope this is not falling away. You may get you may get back on track. So yeah, that's what he says. Again, I think Alex Jones is a great guy. When any, I'm surprised he's still alive. Well, I'll tell you why he's alive. Cause Jesuit Water probably wants to kill him. I just told you, no one dies unless God wants to kill him. God has a purpose for him. But it's mainstream. He's a Jesuit quietature. I'm hearing that everywhere now. And Ken Oven, but no. Ken Oven says he's a good man. I like I like his show. He was on the show. Actually, he called Alex, Alex Jones called him while he's in prison. Talking about, you know, how they raided his house. Um, so, here's a thought. This is a belief. I don't know. Funny thing, I said this while he was in prison. I wonder what guy he'll be like when he comes out of prison. That's what I said. God knows what I said. I don't have to prove you I said it. God knows my thoughts. He has a record of every thought you ever did since you were born. I said to myself, how can Hovind be? What is mine say when he get out of prison? Don't forget what I told you about Nelson Mandela, who's burning in hell right now. Knight of Malta. He has a picture with him with Roman with Roman God with the Maltese cross. Kill the white man. He has songs saying kill the white man. He went to prison. Supposedly. I'm hearing he's, he was in a mansion, probably, to build up sympathy. Is that what's going on with Ken Hovind? Just a suggestion. Comes out of comes out of prison, now he's a bleeding heart. Everybody's saying, good Ken Hovind, good for the fire. I'm just saying. I told you devil uses safe people. He doesn't care. I, he actually enjoys using safe people more than unsafe. Why do I need to use unsafe? I need to show God my power. I need to show my power. Look, let me take Ken Hovind. Guy that most people admire and bring him down. Just saying. So he talks about repentance is a work. His words, not mine. It's a radio interview. I wish I knew the name of it. It's yeah. It's, it falls in not in the 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 God gifts category. It falls in the works category. And uh, I, I thought I thought uh, salvation saved is saved by faith and grace alone, not 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 by works. According then according to him. Repentance is a work, so it's not required for salvation. Uh, I'm like I said, there's a lot of people preaching a lot of types of repentance. I only care about one type of repentance, and that's the godly repentance, not worldly. Worldly is like you can. There's other types of repentance. It, let me tell you one right now. I steal something, I get caught doing it, and I go to jail for it, and I'm embarrassed in front of everybody. That's worldly repentance. I damn feel sorry. I'm really feeling sorry because I got caught, but you know what I mean. Damn, can't believe I did. No, that's a repentance. Don't get me wrong. That's not the godly repentance. Godly repentance is God pricking your heart. Pricked. I was pricked on February 8, 2015. Tell you something I can remember the date. February 8, 2015. He pricked. I said, remember I told you, I do not cry. I cried like a baby. Something came over me. Hard. I'm talking crying hard. Uh, do, do I believe you have to cry when God convicts you? No. Something has come over you. No. Not just read the Bible, I'm saved. Or read the Bible. 
It has to be some outward manifestation. That's what I'm telling you. It's something. Okay, yeah, God, it's all in the heart. I understand that. But it, it didn't happen. This didn't happen in front of anyone. This happened in this very room by myself. Not in front of people. He saved. He saved me. No. I do believe that. You, you, the day you got saved, I do believe it should be, uh, I'm, this is a belief. It should be by yourself. Because salvation is a personal relationship. Just you and God. Not you and the preacher. Oh, can people get saved with more with the preacher being there, at, I'm talking about at that moment, probably. But with me, by myself, no one said, you're a sinner. No one convicted me. Nothing. No one came to me. Nothing. Me at this very spot right here I'm pointing to, right over there. Something just came over me. God pricked his heart. Godly sorrow worketh repentance. That's in the Bible. Godly sorrow. Now, if, you're if your hermeneutics is messed up or allegorical, oh, that can be any kind of. Sorrow. Okay, yeah, that can mean any kind of sorrow. God is sorrow. That's after no. That's after uh, salvation, because it says it clear in the Bible: believe on Jesus Christ and be saved. It's the same as my repentance. Yeah. Well, that's why you're supposed to be a Berean. That's why you get a reward for doing work, studying the Bible. Stop being a one verse theology. If you're making a point, bring out verse after verse after verse. Acts says repent all, everywhere. I command everyone to repent. Repentance. Okay? You, you, the, the, faith and repentance to me is the same thing. You say faith is repentance. If, if you cannot, if you don't have, if God did not give you the godly sorrow of repentance, He did not give you the godly gift of faith. God did not give you the godly gift of faith. He didn't give you the godly gift of repentance. They're connected to each other. Both sides of the same coin. Okay, like Republicans and Democrats, they're both the same. Okay? Just like the Godhead, they're all the same. Yeah, they have different aspects of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, but they're all the same. Repentance is a gift from God. He gives it to you. Okay? He gives you, he pricks your heart. Ah, oh, no, I'm a sinner. Something just comes over you. The Holy Ghost. And then you have the faith to believe. You can argue which comes first. Faith comes first and repentance it doesn't really matter. As long as you get both. Yeah, as long as you get both. But these guys are not for that. Words out of their own mouth. And I didn't, here's how I'm saying do things in the spirit, not in the flesh. I, I didn't anticipate doing this video. I was watching a YouTube ministry of this guy. And he brought up these people. Something came over me. That's what I'm talking about. Do things, good, good works in the spirit. You get a reward on that, depending on how good you do that. You get a reward on that in heaven. And I said, no, I have to make this video. But it's not, I guarantee it's not just them uh, preaching no repentance. But it's funny. All these no repentance gospel people are post-tribbers. Just a thought. All of them. Ken Owen was a pre-tribber for 40 years. Now he's a post-tribber. Just a thought. Anderson's a post-tribber. Phelps is a pre-tribber. Uh, Chuck Missler is a pre-tribber. Doctor in the Eminence. And I don't, I don't even have to question them. Do they believe in no repentance? I don't even question I already know it's the no repentance is by God alone. So it's faith. So, Kevin Oven, uh, I say, like I said, I just, it, it, I believe he saved, but remember, I, I'm not God. I don't say he's, I know, use that word no. You're not God, okay? God knows the hearts of men. I don't know his heart. But I do know. Sin unto death is for believers. That it, this could be him walking back to darkness. Okay, no, he keeps walking into darkness. God will say, okay, he's he's back. He's back going into darkness. A child of the light cannot go back into darkness. A saved child, saved person cannot walk back in darkness continually if I don't convict him. You have to bring him to the devil. Go ahead and destroy him so he can come up. That's sin unto death. I don't hear a lot of people talk about sin unto death. So don't tell me that, uh, that you cannot fall away, even if you're saved. Yes, you can. Okay. So, um, yeah, faith plus repentance equals salvation. If you put you want to put it in a scientific mathematical formula, both from God, you have nothing to boast. You can't add or subtract to it. You can't justify it. Okay. And uh, let, let's define what the word repentance is. Biblical, because again, I told you about. Your etymology, study what words mean, 
your semantics. You don't think the devil worked on the word repentance? Oh, he did. He went to town. You ever heard of that saying? Uh, Knight of Malta, Denzel Washington said that in a mature, Manchurian Candidate, which is Jesuitism, mind control. That's all true. Another movie you should watch, Manchurian Candidate with Denzel Washington. He said someone went to town. They went in our head. New ones get spliced. Well, that sounds like what the devil does with us. <laughs> devil went to town here. Devil went to town. Here's what the biblical meaning of repentance means. It means to change your mind. That's it. By default, okay, hold on, follow, wait up. Changing your mind, something has to happen by default. Turn away from your sin. People say repentance is turning from your sin. Absolutely not. Maybe that's what they 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 mean. Maybe they're talking about that type of repentance. I don't know. Remember, the devil's out of the confusion. He, he he's laughing at us. I don't care if we're saved or not. He's laughing at the look at how we got these guys bickering. You see the power of God? You see the power? You see the power I have, God? You see how I'm intelligent? Powerful. I will be God someday. I will ascend to the heavens, the five I wills, which is the five points of the pentagram in the Pentagon, built by a Knight of Malta Pentagon. Uh, yeah, maybe that's the type of repentance. If it is, turn, if you're talking about that type of repentance, fine. You need to, to be saved. We need to be on the same page. I'm talking about the godly sorrow of repentance that's in pricking your heart. That means change mind. Outlook changes of life. I can't even keep living like this. I can't keep walking in darkness. That's a, what you should be saying to yourself. No, I gotta change. I'm on. I'm on the path to eternal hellfire, and I knew hell existed when I was saved. When, when I was unsaved, I knew it existed for a fact. I saw total depraved I am. There's people. Oh, they have good reason not to be saved because they don't believe in hell. Don't believe God. I did. The Bible says the teachers get punished more severely. What is that telling me? People that are preaching the gospel, you better be saved because you're not, you're getting worse, you're getting it worse more than people that don't know what you know about the Bible. Does that make sense? So, Pastor Anderson, I hope you're saved because you're a preacher of God, you're a public figure, your degree of the lake of fire will be more for the average Joe Schmo with his YouTube ministry that thinks he's saved. You're gonna get it more. Okay? Repentance means change your mind. Look it up. Dictionary. I think it's, it's, yeah, it's Greek. Reading in Greek. Repentance means change your mind. With changing your mind, by default, naturally, you turn away from your sin. You ever have the mind of Christ? No, I'm not talking about Christ consciousness, that New Age philosophy crap. I'm not talking about uh, Christ consciousness. Christ consciousness is a state of thought. You got the mind of Christ. I'm talking about the biblical mind of Christ. Christ mindset, that's more better. Thanks, Holy Ghost, for pardon that word in my, to my head there. Uh, my mindset. When you change, change your mind. What we talking about? Change your mind. You have, you change your mindset from of your flesh and the world to the Christ. Remember, I told you to be Christ-like is to think like He thinks, see things like He see things. That means you're Christ. No, to have His eyes, how He views the world. That's all that means. Okay, I'm not Christ, but don't tell me I'm not Christ-like. Yes, I am. If you're saved, you're Christ-like. Okay, that's why he, if you're not Christ-like, he will not let you reign with him. There's one There's one thing letting, letting you entrance into his Father's kingdom. But the Bible says partakers, reign with him. Equal footing, no, but above the the people with the lesser rewards, uh, certainly. Because I told you, Christ is not a socialist communist. Everybody's not going to be the same in rank and role when they're in the New Jerusalem. No way. Chuck Mister talks about that. If that was the case, then what's, why, why you have a war system? Why well, don't need to give out rewards? Everybody's the same. Everybody's going to do the same in heaven. Serve God in heaven. No. There's going to be people of authority in heaven. There's going to be people below authority in heaven. Okay? Uh, entrance into heaven and inheritance are two different things. I, I, I'm, pro, I'm provided, permit, permitted to sleep in my parents' house. I can't rearrange. This is their furniture, by the way. All this bed and everything. TV is mine. This computer is mine. I bought it. She's a, of the Lord. You don't own nothing. God owns it. But you know what I mean. But yeah, that's that dresser. I don't have inheritance in this house. Uh, like I said, a Christian man stands on his own two feet. He, his house is his and his alone. He provides his own. I don't have an inheritance I can rearrange. I don't like this. Let me take it away. No. Don't think you can rearrange the, the, the mansion that your 
the, your father gives you in heaven? No. No. He, you get, the God is the ultimate judge. I cannot stress this enough. People go into hell, they'll get the degree. There's, remember, there's not the same sins. There's greater sins, blasphemous sins, unforgivable sin. I can think of two. Holy Ghost, thinking it's a force. Pope calls himself the vicar of Christ. That means he's denying the Holy Ghost. That's unforgivable. Denying Christ. Christ denies. No, he denies. Deny you, Christ. So, uh, yeah, people go getting thrown in the lake of fire. They get the degree. They, either way, you're based on your works. Saved or not saved, really. Just that the only difference is one of you is going to heaven, one's going to hell. But either way, you you really get judged by your works. I'm not talking about. Uh, I'm not talking about where you're going. Of course, someone saved does he doesn't need no works. He's saved. Period. Yeah, he needs to produce works. I'm saying judged. Just because he saves, he's not immune for being judged. That's what I meant. When you see when you have to judge and see Christ, you will be judged, saved or not saved. Okay, when you're saved, you still will be judged. God will take your works. What is bad will get thrown in the flame. That's what that was. That means branches get cut off. Not provoke. There's no fruit on this branch. And I think that's also it means sin unto death. It, it could mean either one. I'm not true. Not sure. Gets thrown in the fire. No, he did. These works stand the test of fire. Remember, I told you put it to the fire. of The Bible. Well, that's what God is doing. I believe that the judgment seat of Christ. This is just a, a belief. You'll see, remember I told you, God is a consuming fire. You'll see a uh, a bush, probably not a bush, but you see fire, like a fire, fire just appearing out of nowhere. He's going to take your works, pull it out of you. This is just belief. I'm not saying this is biblical. He's going to pull it out of you and see, does the fire consume it? If it does, the evil works, good. they could be good too, they, but it's of the flesh. This work that you did here, preaching, I don't want you to do, do it at this point. Or you did this of the flesh, you know, giving to the poor. You did it for your own self pride. You divided the glory, so it's no good. It gets burned up, or or it, or it does not get consumed. It's immune from the fire. Those are the ones of the, of the spirit. Those are the fruit of the spirit that I gave you that you use because you're a laborer. Here's your reward, and I believe, depending on how much rewards you get, depends on your status. Your your status is equal. Everybody's status is equal. Your role, status, and role are two different things. God the Father. The Son, the Holy Ghost, they all have the same status. Their essence is the same. Don't tell me that they have the same role. Oh, Jesus Christ is going to tell God's Father what to do? Holy Ghost is going to tell the Jesus Christ what to do? No. Chain of command, remember? And that's, that's how it is it's going to be in heaven. You best believe God's going to abide by chain of command. There's no chain of command here because the world is in disarray, in chaos. There will be chain of command in New Jerusalem. Okay? There will be partakers in Christ reigning with Him. And there's going to be people... That's gonna that's gonna be servants. There's gonna be people of lesser roles. Remember, people say, "What are you gonna do in heaven?" You're still gonna be serving God. All the only difference is you're gonna be serving God without the sinful nature pulling you, saying, "No, I don't want to serve." That's what you're gonna be doing in the new Jerusalem. And um, on the flip side, hell. Yes, you get to get thrown to hell, but like I said, God is the ultimate judge. You get the degree of fire. So, Pastor Anderson, if you're damned to hell. You get more degree as if I'm more more than me if if I'm saved because you're preaching. You're he's out in the public face. This guy's I'm not saying he's world renowned, well known, but he he's getting up there. He has a documentary which is on Alex Jones' website, the Last Days of Revelation, working with people who are new agers. This Witten Buyer, I know of him. He made that documentary, Chimatic, Semantics, whatever Chimatica, which is nothing but new age garbage. Just good edifying stuff there. It's new age garbage. Remember, the company they keep, Pastor Anderson's good friends with that guy because he helped produce his DVD for, to pull it on Alice Jones' website. Um, I wouldn't be surprised he was just a quiet this Pastor Anderson or Ray Even though he has a good documentary about you know King James being the inherent word of God, exposing it. Like I said, they was going to want you to do righteousness to fool everybody. That was righteous. That's a righteous uh, documentary. He's the one that made me convinced. Yes, well, actually, God does, but God convicted me by using him. Yes, it's definitely King James. But I always knew King James, even when I was unsaved. But without no doubt, he made a good argument. But like I said, that was gonna make save the unsaved people do righteousness because righteousness is 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 the cloak. It's, it's it's shielding you from their heart, from their true intention. 
Now I see Pastor Anderson's true intentions. I'm sorry I'm picking on him more than Hovind because see how he preaches, then 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 get back with me. See how he preaches, he's angry, he's losing righteous indignation. No, this is not righteous indignation. Pastor Lawson, Charles Lawson, that's past. Look at Pastor Charles Lawson preaching. Google him, then look at Pastor Anderson, compare the two. Which one's of the devil and of God? And Pastor Lawson has cross right there on the podium. But no, I, I believe, I strongly believe he saved. He said himself in his own preaching, everyone's a hypocrite, everyone's ignorant of something. No doubt, he's ignorant of the cross, which is a pagan symbol, sun symbol. Were, were, the, were the thieves Christian? No. Rome has been using that before Christ is to humiliate people. Even Bill Hicks says, uh, you see people walk around with pins with, with, a, with a rifle, with 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 Jackie Onassis still remembering your husband. That's what he does in his uh making fun. Yeah, you, you if Christ got beat with a crowbar, you wear a crowbar on around his neck and around your neck to remember him getting beat. So yeah, he has that, but hey, we're not perfect. What we need to stop is this dissension, dissension, this arguing, bickering among brethren over I'm not saying petty things, but things that are not salvation based. Uh, drinking wine is serious because uh, uh, not saying don't drink wine is serious is that salvation based what I mean by salvation based is just because you believe don't drink no alcohol at all I'm talking about drunkenness is a sin not, not drinking alcohol but not drinking alcohol or not is that is that good enough to say that you're not saved no you having a cross in your church it's, it's getting up there but no uh, what else uh, post stripper no you can be a post shiver and I still can strongly believe you're saved, but you're deluded. But it, it, fundamentally, you gotta, they gotta be a line, and here's my line: uh, when, when judging someone, because the Bible says, "Yes, judge not, least be be judged." But then it said, "Judge righteously." Uh, can't be no contradiction, one or the other. It says, "Judge righteously." I can't judge right righteously. So when I'm when when. When you want to spot out who's really with Christ or not, let's just say, let's forget salvation. Who's who's walking in the light? Because don't tell me there's not people that compared to walk in the light so be unsaved. You thought Martin Luther King? I bet you thought Martin Luther King is saved. No, he's burning in hell. He walked in the light outwardly. So don't give me that manifestation of works. Okay, yeah, he's definitely saved. Here's the characteristics you should look out for: just people that you know who's walking in the light. If they Here's the doctrine you better get right. I'll give you leeway, negotiability on every other doctrine, but doctrine of salvation. And these guys get it wrong com completely. Not even close. I hope, I pray to God, I'm misinterpreting them. They're thinking about some other repentance, but this is how salvation works. God, I, listen carefully because I'm going to explain. I already said this in my statement of faith, but this is so important. I got to say it again right now. You. Like I said, I don't know if it's faith or repentance come first. But I think it's repentance. It makes more sense. Uh, because uh, how can you how can he give you faith if you're, if you're not sorry, if you don't have a godly sorrow? Now, I could be wrong. I could be faith first. But according to them, it is just faith. Uh, both Pastor Anderson and Kid Over. According to them, it is faith and that's it. Okay, that's you just faith and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. After that, then you repent. I told you after your salvation, I can't make this clear. After your salvation, when you sin, you do not repent to God. You confess your sins, book of Ephesians, for we confess our sins. If you don't confess, you will get chastised. And you're supposed to love your chastisement because only a child of God walking in the light gets chastised. Unsaved people get punished. You don't get chastised. Know the difference. So uh, with the... Uh, with uh, repentance, I think it comes first. He pricks this how the process goes. That's how it goes with me. Everybody's testimony different. After watching, reading the Bible, listening to Eric Phelps, watching documentaries, reading the Bible, still being my wicked way, still walking in the darkness. Out of nowhere, when I said this is sudden, spontaneous, I don't, I don't, you don't make an effort. Okay, I'm gonna repent. No. That's that positive will again. I can do it in my own will. You can't do nothing in your own will. Saved or not saved. Will of God. I didn't say I'm gonna go and cry like a baby. Remember I told you I didn't I don't cry. 
I don't cry. I tear up. I don't cry. <laughs> That's what I was doing. I don't do that. I said, I know I said that because uh, uh, I, I have a pretty good memory. I know what I said. I said, I don't cry. And it's proof men that don't cry are weak. That's a scientific fact. I didn't say one more February 8th. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make an effort to repent. God is No. Came out of nowhere. I was watching TV. Something just came over me. I just saw saw it all. Saw saw the error of my ways. Saw this world. Saw my sinful flesh. Saw that I've been guided by it. And remember, either you have to serve someone. There's a rock song called that. You have to serve somebody. I'm serving Satan. He was not with me. He's against me. There's no in between. I pricked my heart. Whoop! Cried like a baby. And then he imparted the faith to me. I think that's how it works. Repentance first and faith. It can go either way. It doesn't matter. They're interchangeable. This is faith and repentance is the same thing. It's the same thing. They're both from God. But I think repentance comes first. And then he gives you the faith to believe the gospel. Because I, be, I didn't believe the gospel. But I had the gospel in my head. Yeah, it makes sense. Jesus Christ. Hey, don't. it's not about the mind. Man, I just told you the mind's nothing. It's not having the gospel in the mind. I recited the gospel... Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4, I recited before I was saved. I knew the gospel before I was saved. I can recite to anyone before I was saved. I was sound in biblical doctrine before I was saved. That's all mine, mine, mine. This is of the heart. How do I know it's from God or the devil? Well, you ever heard of that saying, did you put your heart into it, really? You went to work today. Did you put your heart? No, I didn't really put, put my heart into it. Well, when you get saved, God puts Jesus Christ's heart into you, imputing his righteousness. Not in the, of the mind. That's why I hope pro, that's that's probably how Pastor Anderson think he got saved. I'm into like look at me. I know the Bible back and forth. I know King James, the inherent word of God, mind, mind, mind. No. That's Christ's consciousness he probably has there. He works with a new ager, why not? To do his DVD, the end of what is the end of tribulation, after the tribulation. What you put on the Alex Jones site, the same. So, yeah, any like I said, any boy that preaches the, the gospel, and they put a word in front of it, the repentance gospel, the prosperity gospel, the faith gospel, even faith, I don't care. If the gospel, not good news, the gospel, period. Believe on the gospel. The Bible, I hope these guys are saved because the Bible has harsh degrees of lake of fire says it in the Bible, do not pervert the gospel. Do not pervert. He who uh, who uh, leads my little children, that's anybody, walking in darkness, away from me, it's better for them to put a milestone on their neck and get thrown in the ocean. So I pray for these guys tonight that they are saved. I believe. I'm confident. Again, that's mine. See what I'm saying? It, I can't say in my heart. Here's my point right now. I can't say in my heart of hearts, I believe in saved. Well, that's okay because I don't I don't know his heart anyways. But Pastor Anderson right now, no, he's not saved. No. By his fruits, you should know him. He's friends with Alex Jones. Friends with a new ager making his DVD. Preaches repentance. It's not required to go to heaven. Yes, believe on Jesus Christ, but not repentance. Uh, but yeah, here we go. I told you about Joel Osteen. When he preaches down in Houston, Texas, there's a big globe in front of them, of the earth. I already told you what that means, right? Globe signifies the new age, new old order. Well, guess what What background Pastor Anderson is preaching from in his church? The world map. That's a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. It's just the illusion of coincidence. When you see him preaching, Pastor Anderson, he's preaching behind the map. You know, the wall is, is designed like someone painted the, the borders, the it's like a picture of the, the globe, but flat. People know what I'm talking about. You can have a background on your computer. That's what he's preaching. Anyone that does that, that is a flag. From the Holy Ghost. New Age. So as of now, he's not saved. Okay? I told you the devil's cunning, most intelligent creature God created. He he comes after you more as you say. He delights in making fall of people's uh, saved people fall as much as the unsaved people going to hell. He delights in it. I know he does. I would. If I was there, I would. Look, God, here's your saved person. Look what I made him. Look. He tried to do that with Job, but he couldn't.
try to do the same thing with Job. He didn't. That's what we need to be like, like Job. Remember what Job said. Did he want? He said he wanted to die. Don't get me wrong, but he pulled Christ pull, pulled out his hand of protection for him, and the devil went to town on him. His wife, being the weaker vessel, cursed God and died. And God gave him for believing. I will not curse my God. God gave him more than he had. Not he didn't wait until you go to heaven. People think God blesses you. He has to wait to go. No, he gave it to him right then and there. Now, if he gave him everything. He had much more than in there while he's on earth. Imagine what he has in heaven right now. Abundant. Yes, he's a partaker in Christ, Job. Better believe it. He's a partaker in Christ. If you're like Job, you'll be a partaker in Christ. Not just entering heaven. You'll have inheritance. You'll be a, a person of authority role. Not, not saying your your biggest status in heaven. You're God above everybody else. Everybody's on equal footing. It's like government. It's like the family. My father is just a man just as much as me, but he has a bigger role in me. He's the father of the house. He's the lord of the house. Does that mean he's God? No. He's in a God-like authority. You better believe it. That's why God calls the people in government the ministers of God. They display, dispense his justice. So I'm going to end there. No more of this uh, re repentance gospel trash. Okay? Faith and repentance equals salvation. Now, if I'm wrong about that, go ahead and convict me. But it's faith plus repentance. Faith of who? Let me be perfectly clear. See, I'm, I'm doing what I'm saying not to do, not being clear. Faith uh, in the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died on the cross, according to scriptures, was dead, according to scriptures, buried, rose again on the third day so that our sins can be forgiven. I don't know if that's verbatim, close enough. That's the faith. Of what he, who he is, he's the son of God. God manifests the flesh in the flesh. You need to know who he is and what he did. That's faith. So I mean by faith, that's what I mean by that. Who he is and what he done for you. And then comes repentance. The uh, I, I said repentance comes first. Repentance is the godly sorrow. God pricking your heart. You breaking down. It's some, it's it's. I'm not saying emotional because I told you emotions of the devil, but it's kind of like emotional breakdown. You ever say heard of that person? He has emotional breakdown. It's kind of like that. You you remember I told you you need to be destroyed. You need to be broken down so God can build you up. You need to be crucified in the flesh with Christ. That's what God saw repentance. The old has gone, the new has come. You're literally a new person there. Now, I'm you stop sinning, you, your habits disappear in the air? No. You see a decline. It's being born again, it's just you need to think about it just as a baby. When I'm born, I'm a baby. Do I stay three years old? No. I grow in age, I mature in age into a man. You have to grow. Spiritual growth. And these guys are their growth is stunted. They stopped growing right now. They're preaching no repentance gospel. Their growth is stopped. So I'm gonna pray for you guys. I can do all things to Christ who strengthened me. Peace.